Hello, Courier Nation. Welcome to the Deliver on Your Business podcast, where you are the boss. Each week, we talk about how to make the most of your business as an independent contractor, as a courier delivering for gig economy apps like Grubhub, DoorDash, Postmates, Uber Eats, and so many others. Well, hey, Courier Nation, welcome back for another week. Uh, We're just a couple weeks away from Thanksgiving already. It's hard to believe that the year goes as quick, isn't it? Uh, Folks, this week, I'm going to kind of change things up a little bit. I don't think I announced it on the podcast last week. I did announce in the newsletter that we're going to do a wrap up of all of the different companies and kind of a comparison now of what what it's like to work for all the companies now that we've done an issue on Grubhub, Postmates, Uber Eats, and DoorDash. But I decided to change it up a little bit just because, you know, Uber Eats has uh, rolled out their new pay model, their new structure here in my market, and I just thought it makes sense to talk about that a little bit more. I know that's two weeks in a row talking about Uber Eats. Maybe that's overkill. I don't know. But bottom line here, folks, is no matter how you spend it, no matter how you look at it, it is a reduction in delivery fees. Even with all the things that they're adding on and all of the, there there are some improvements, but it's still going to be a reduction. That probably shouldn't come as a surprise because anytime anybody's announcing a new pay model, it ends up being a pay cut, you know, more often than not anyway. So, so even though it is a pay reduction, there, there are some improvements that might actually make it so I'm more likely to turn on Uber Eats as a result. But I wanted to talk about some takeaways that I have. In particular, I've got seven takeaways about the new pay structure, the new pay model for Uber Eats. And in particular, I want to talk about how those changes will impact us as couriers, as independent contractors who deliver for them. So the first one, is that the base pay on the new pay model is it is a pretty dramatic reduction. Now, one of the beautiful things about the previous pay model was that you could calculate what you're going to be based, paid based on distance and time. You're going to have a pickup fee and a drop-off fee. In my market, those two totaled $1.63. And then there was $0.65 cents a mile, and there was $0.7.8 cents per minute. <clears throat> now, these are the actual paid amounts after their quirky 35% Uber Eats receives thing that they did. And I could really get into a soapbox about how they charge a commission for what they are paying us. And it is them paying us. Don't make any mistakes about that. But anyway, that's all I'll say about that. I don't want to get into that, go down that rabbit hole right now. But under the new pay model, folks, one thing you got to understand, there's no more transparency. There is no more formula. They are like Grubhub. They are like DoorDash. There is no formula. In fact, in their FAQ about the pay model, they said this. They said, rather than publishing base fare rates to explain earnings, we will be showing an upfront guaranteed minimum amount that is inclusive of your total trip earnings before you accept it. And we believe this is the easiest way to understand how much you will earn at the time of a request. To view exact base fare payments, refer to trip details once the delivery is completed. The translation, folks, because it's a lot of blah, blah, blah and spin ease, but it's uh, the translation is, We're going to pay you whatever the heck we want to pay you because it's easier for you to just blindly take whatever the pay is than to actually have to calculate what you should have been paid. The way they stated at the end, it makes it look like, well, maybe there's still a breakdown if you really dig into it, right? Well, and if you look at the show notes, I've got a link to the companion article that I put up on the website, and I'll have a lot of screenshots there, but you can see that there is no breakdown. All you get is under the you receive, it shows a base fare, it shows your tip, and then it shows an amount that'll be like what they call a trip supplement. And then if there's boost or surge or anything like that, that's added on top of it. So it's a very different layout now. It is just a delivery fee. Uh, there's no no more transparency. And on so far for me, I have found that it's been an average of almost a 45% drop. It's been as much as 60%. I think it, or it was a uh, um, 39% at the very best was a 39% reduction. That was the very best one of all of the fees that I've looked at so far when calculating what that delivery would have been under the old model, because under the old model, you could calculate. 
Under the new one, you have no idea what to expect other than your best bet is maybe to calculate what it would have been under the old one and you take it by, you know, about 45% off. So they are taking more than a third off of every delivery and uh, in some cases almost a half off. So it's a pretty significant cut in the base fee. The second takeaway is they did add something that they call a trip supplement. Now, Uber Eats explains that their new pay model has a lower base pay, and they say there's a reason for that. And they explain, because we are adding an expanding payment called trip supplement, which helps make earnings for each trip more reflective of that trip, we have reduced base fares. The surge in both boost promotions will continue to work the same and may be available when it's busy. So they're reducing base pay. They're eliminating a formula that is based on, you know, things like time and distance, which, folks, I don't know what could really be more reflective of what a trip is than the way that they based their previous pay, where your actual time, the actual amount of distance that you drove. And uh, but what they're saying is, well, we want to make something that is more reflective of that trip. And so we're going to add a little trip supplement that might do that. Basically, it is an undefined and very arbitrary element. It reminds me a lot of uh, DoorDash and their desirability factor that they introduced into their new pay model. But in their email that they explained the changes, they said this is an element that is added to make every trip worthwhile. Sounds like DoorDash, doesn't it? At least on their old pay model. You don't have to reduce fares to make trips worthwhile, folks. You know that? If, if you paid well just by itself without reducing fares and then adding a little bit back, uh, if there's an issue that the current fare structure fails to compensate, all you got to do really is make up for it in some other way. You know, increase your fares by a percentage in busier times, maybe add a per trip bonus, you know, like blitzes, quests, and oh wait, they're kind of already doing that, aren't they? The bottom line is, folks, that trip supplement, it is like a little bit extra. I had some deliveries where it was like uh, 40% knocked off and there was no trip supplement. I had one trip supplement for 13 cents. I had two trips so far that I think the trip supplement actually made the overall pay or, or the delivery fee plus trip supplement higher than what the delivery fee would have been under the old model. But for the most part, it is uh, right now about a uh, totaling about 90% of what the old fare structure is. So the bottom line is that trip supplement is an excuse to reduce fares. They say, oh, we're going to cut these fees, but then we're going to throw this trip supplement on top of that. And they don't make it clear, but I think everybody knows, you and I know, that that trip supplement is not going to average out to as much as what they're taking off. It's an excuse to reduce your fees and uh, reduce what they have to pay out. So let's start the party, folks. Uh, you know, that uh, that 13 cent supplement there, uh, that's, that's a lot of extra money, isn't it? So here's another takeaway that I've got that I've noticed anyway, is that Uber Eats is playing the same kind of post new model game that all the other carriers are doing and in artificially increasing pay right after introducing the model. I have, uh, you know, the first day that the pay model was rolled out was Tuesday of this week for me. Tuesday is the slowest day of the week, especially in my market. All my measurements have said the same thing. It is the slowest and Uber Eats, you know, usually they'll do boosts between 11 and 2 and between 5 and 9, you know, and those those are the higher demand times. And and the boosts are always lower on Tuesday, I think, than about any other time, partly because there's not that much demand. And there hardly ever is a boost between, let's say, 2 in the afternoon and 5 because there's no demand. And, uh, you know, the highest that I usually see, unless it's like, you know, extremely busy out there, unless the weather's really bad or there's some major event or something, usually the highest that I see in a boost in my market is 1.5. Now, what that means, if you're not as familiar with Uber Eats, is that they'll have certain times where they boost your pay by whatever. So if your delivery fee would have added up to $5, a 1.5 boost would mean it's now $7.50. It's like 50% higher. You take your 5 times 1.5, and that's what you'd actually get paid. Well, so 3 p.m. Tuesday afternoon, which is probably the deadest, lowest demand time for delivery in the whole week, 
and Uber Eats is offering a 2.7 boost. You know, it, it is just, I mean, to me, it is just so obvious that what they're doing is they're offering all of a sudden these two plus boosts in a lot of areas in my market that uh, right now it's all about making it look like you're actually making more money with this new pay model. But here's the thing is, I think this is why this is a significant because I've seen the same thing happen with Grubhub, and I've seen it happen with DoorDash. You know, I, I posted something. I'll put a link in the uh, show notes for the uh, articles. But uh, when Grubhub first introduced a new pay model in my market, um, it was also less transparent. And uh, I noticed, I, I had noted originally the very first time that it came out that the new pay uh, was there was no more formula to it, but you could still calculate based on the old pay model what it would have been. And what I was finding was that Grubhub was actually paying just a little bit more per delivery on average than what they were under the old model. But within a few weeks, they had lowered that to be in about a 20% reduction. That seems kind of about common there, doesn't it? About 20%, 10 to 20% reduction. I noticed the same thing with DoorDash. Now, with DoorDash, you really couldn't measure because you couldn't tell how they calculated their guaranteed payments before. But I've noticed this with DoorDash that, uh, boy, they were really throwing out a lot of high-paying offers right after they introduced their new pay model, and it has been dropping. Uh, I'm, I'm noticing a uh, drop in the average per delivery. So this is kind of a game that these guys play when they roll out a new model is they're going to do some artificial things to – inflate the pay right when they roll it out because it doesn't look like the pay decrease that it is. And then they'll just very slowly kind of drop that down. They'll, they'll lower the boosts again. They'll lower those trip supplements and things like that. And, uh, you can just expect that to happen. I, you know, um, you just know by watching everybody else, that's what's going to happen next. Now, and here's another thing that I've noticed really when you think about it, it's like the new Uber Eats pay model is basically the old DoorDash model revisited in a lot of ways. I mean, I swear, some of the ways they worded stuff, it's like they had to hire one of the spin doctors away from DoorDash because they announced it, you know, like saying, we're going to make every trip worthwhile. You know, where have you heard that before? But the other thing you see is, you know, now they are starting to introduce, you're going to get a guaranteed pay. And I have had a number of times, uh, not many, but I've had a couple of times at least where the actual pay ends up being higher. And then, you know, now one thing with Uber Eats, you don't know what the tip's going to be. That amount that they introduce or that that they offer doesn't include the tip. But, you know, if the customer tips, your pay is going to be higher. Uh, I've had a couple of times where the pay um, when it was all said and done before the tip was higher than the guarantee. It just, it sounds like DoorDash, you know, and I think what it is, is it's really kind of a psychological game that they're playing. Every once in a while, you get a payout that is higher than what was offered, and and that feels kind of good, you know, it's a nice surprise, but what it does is it distracts us, you know, it distracts us from the overall lower pay that we're getting. DoorDash did this with their old pay model with great success, and uh, people would celebrate when they got this over guarantee, and it was a great distraction because you know, heck, you know, customer tipped $15, you got $16 and the guarantee was five. And you're like, oh, this is awesome. Well, it kind of took away from the uh, fact that uh, DoorDash is only paying $1 out of that $16. And it doesn't matter how far you drove or how long you waited or anything like that. Everything was coming from the customer. I think what they're doing here is it's kind of a thing that just really serves to be a distraction. And Uber Eats is following that DoorDash model. So here's another takeaway that I've got. This one is, for the most part, good, but the good is kind of limited. And that is that they do provide a lot more information now on the delivery offers than what they used to. But that impact is limited. Now, here's, you know, good news with this structure is I think there's kind of a trade in that, you know, okay, Uber said, all right, we're going to cut your pay a little bit, but we're going to give you the information you need. And I'll be honest, more often than not, I'll take that trade if it actually works, but there are some problems with that. But that's when the information is actually available because the new structure introduces additional information on the offer screen that they have not been providing before. And there's four major improvements. 
Uh, the first one is you get the name of the restaurant. It used to be all you got was how many minutes away the offer was going to be. The second is you see on the map where the food is being dropped off. Now, this is huge. This is this is the main reason I had not been doing Uber Eats in the past, or very, very little of Uber Eats, because I don't know where that drop-off is going to be. And because I work with multiple apps, uh, and because I like to make business decisions on what I think that I'm going to be able to earn per minute, I need that information. So them showing that information is huge. Now, the third thing that kind of goes along with this is they also show how many minutes you can estimate the drive from the restaurant to the customer will be. So on the map, and, and again, in the show notes, um, you can get the link to the companion article, and that's got screenshots. Um, you can see a screenshot here of a, an offer screen, and you can see the eight minutes to the restaurant, but you also see two minutes to the customer. So you got a better idea of what you can expect the total drive time to be, depending on how accurate those numbers are, of course. And this is one thing that... Uh, I think they uh, they go beyond what Grubhub or Postmates do. They're really only behind DoorDash in that regard. And the final thing is that they've added is they also show a minimum payment amount. Now, that minimum payment amount is basically what you can expect the overall fees to be before the tip. And, uh, you know, uh, because the tip, uh, because customers can either change or add the tip after the delivery, they don't, they don't uh, show you the tip amount. But because of the type of restaurant, you can kind of do some at least some educated guesses on what they would be. You can play the averages that way. I don't mind that so much. And the same reason I don't mind not knowing the tip amount on Postmates because once you get to know the market, you can kind of work around that. But anyway, I've rarely delivered Uber Eats in the past simply because that information was not available. But here's the problem with this one is at least for me, working on an Android phone, that information is of limited value. And there's two reasons that I say that. The first one, like I said, I think this is just an Android issue. Uh, it has to do with the always-on-top functionality that Android phones offer. I don't think the iPhone offers this. But how it works is that on Android, when you get a delivery offer from Uber Eats, it doesn't matter whether or not that screen, whether or not that app is open, it'll pop up that information for you right away. So you don't have to go and try and open up the app and make the decision. Now you've got such a short window of time to make a decision. That's probably a good thing. Or at least it sounds good on paper, right? But there's a problem with this. If you don't have the app open, if you, if if the Uber Eats app is not open and an offer comes in, it does pop up still. It will show you that you got a delivery. And I put a screenshot up of uh, one that was like this. And it, it told me that it was four minutes. That was nice. It was at a Burger King. It told me that I can earn at least $3, but the map is gone. I have no idea where the drop-off is. Behind that information, I'm seeing whatever was on the app that was already open. And you can't do anything about that. You can't switch to the Uber Eats app. You can't, there's no way to pull up the map. In fact, there's no way to do anything else at all on any apps until you accept or decline. And that's just a pain in the butt, folks. Um, I think between that and uh, the fact that uh, the Uber Eats notification, what it does is it, uh, it, it uh, cranks up the volume on the notification sounds all the way to the top. And because I hook up to my stereo with Bluetooth, that's not good. <laughs> it's just, it'll blow you out sometimes. And so that is a problem. I've got to have that Uber Eats op app open or the uh, driver app for Uber Eats open all the time to be able to see all of that detail. And for me, that's a minority of the time because I've either got other delivery apps open or I've got the GPS up or all sorts of different things that are going on. So it's not that often that I'm going to have that op app open. So even though there's a lot more information, the most important information is not available to me most of the time. Now, the second issue around this, and I think this happens with uh, anybody, is that when an order comes in while you're on a delivery, all you get is 
just that basic information. It doesn't display the map map for the new location. It's still displaying the map for where your current delivery is. So if you get a second offer for a stacked order, or if you're on the route and it's giving you an offer for somewhere to pick up, you don't get that drop off location. So it's an improvement, but it's a very limited improvement because of the way the app works. Here's another thing, and this is just me. I don't know. I, You know what I would tell you to go take a look yourself on your payment histories and things like that and see if it did this to you. But uh, one thing that I discovered when uh, just looking into what the pay has been like is I discovered that Uber has been lying to me about their old pay. And uh, when I was doing calculations based on the old pay model to show something, I noticed something in the old pay mo- pay details. So like I published on the companion page, a little clip of a snippet from one of my pay summaries. And it's this way on all my deliveries that have happened uh, going back to at least the beginning of the year. And so what it says is it says distance and then in parentheses, 2.73 miles times 78 cents per mile. And the total amount was $1.77. Well, that's pretty straightforward, right? You know, and that's one thing I liked was that transparency, but there was a problem. Do the math. 2.73 times 78 cents is $2.13. And in my history, all the way through, they did the same thing. Now, the actual pay amount that they were paying me was 65 cents. And actually, now I'm going to kind of jump to their defense real quick. It wasn't that Uber Eats was underpaying me because I knew that the base pay was $1. And then they do their 35% commission or they take off that 35% back to that quirky little 35% thing. So I knew that it should have been 65 cents per mile, but it's just that on the pay summary, it says 78 cents a mile. And so the fact that they display this is the amount that I'm being paid though, is just wrong. I don't know if it's just an error. I don't know if it's something that is just very isolated. I don't know if it's something that is uh you know, if it's more widespread. So one last takeaway. Okay, folks, this is nothing new, but tipping still sucks. Okay. Now to be fair, it's not that I'd expect the new model is going to change this. The reality is that tipping on Uber Eats has always been far below anybody else, including way below Postmates, who also does their tipping after the fact. But the number of times that I get tipped on Uber Eats, it has improved since they've implemented the option to choose your tip when you're placing the order. But the percentage of what I earn on Uber Eats is dramatically lower in tips than what anybody else does. And that hasn't changed and probably is not going to change. So the question is, what does all this mean? You know, how, how does this impact you? What, what do these takeaways mean in the long run? Now, personally, for me, even though it is a reduction in delivery fees, I will probably deliver more with Uber Eats now because at least when I have the app open, I can see where the drop off is. And again, I've been passing, you know, I've been not even turning the app on because they haven't been providing the information I needed to make a decision. They're starting to do that. And that alone means that I'm more likely to at least give them a shot at it. The question, why are they doing this pay change? And I do think that it has to do with the tipping issue because here's the deal. Tipping with Uber Eats, like I said, it's been terrible always. I mean, that's just been the history of Uber Eats. And and it especially goes back to when they started. And I actually had uh, uh, my uh, stepdaughter made a comment one time. She said, well, I thought that uh, they paid well enough that we don't need to tip because I've never really tipped on Uber or Uber Eats or any of those because they've said that. And that is part of the problem. Way back in the day, at least Uber with the ride share used to kind of advertise that, that, you know, you don't need to tip here because we pay our drivers well enough. But really what that was, was that was kind of their way of trying to uh, compete with uh, the taxis. And and, because that was kind of where they were starting was to be an alternative to taxi service. And tipping was an issue there. So they said, we're just going to pay people well enough that you don't have to tip them. And that is a culture that has stuck around. For the longest time, you could not even tip through their app. Then they added that option, but it was kind of buried. And then eventually, they kind of made that a little easier to tip. And then they finally got to a point where now they offer the option to place a tip. And so they've gotten better at encouraging people to tip. But I think that there's just a culture that they developed 
that, you know, you know, people just aren't used to tipping. Now, Uber Eats, here's the deal. I mean, at least these are my numbers and everybody's going to have different numbers, but these are my numbers over, over a couple of years now. And Postmates, Grubhub, DoorDash, all of them, I get more than 50% of what I earn comes through tips. And, and, and that's tips placed through the app. With Uber Eats, I get about 20% of what I earn through tips. And that's whether it's cash or through the app. You know, so what that means is if you're getting t- paid $10 on a delivery, if you did that delivery for Grubhub, you know, on a $10 delivery from Grubhub, DoorDash, even Postmates, generally you can expect that about on average $5 of that is coming from the company and the rest is coming from tips. Well, the problem is that for that $10 delivery from Uber Eats, that has to be $8 that's coming out of Uber Eats's pocket as opposed to $5 from the other. So really, it's like about a 60% more that Uber Eats has to pay out of their own pocket to be competitive because the tipping is that bad. And that puts them at a huge competitive disadvantage. But I think they've been improving the tipping. And I mentioned all the different improvements they've made. They're trying to get better because they realize that if they are going to stay competitive, if they're going to stay in business in delivery, they've got to get back. They've got to get themselves down to a level where they're paying out about as much as everybody else is. And that's why this new pay model, I think, because what they've done, the old pay model, uh, the way it was structured, there was no way that they could drop that down enough to get competitive, I don't think. Um, especially on longer distance deliveries and with everybody starting to emphasize uh, longer and cheaper deliveries, the problem with Uber Eats is because they paid so well by the mile and they paid for the time, a long delivery just cost them a heck of a lot more. And they just couldn't stay competitive doing that. So they had to get the delivery fees, the money they're paying out of their pocket down to a level that is competitive with the other companies. And the new pay structure kind of does that. You know, they're, they're, when they get down to about, you know, a little more than half of what they're paying before, now they're right in there with where DoorDash and Grubhub are. But what they do then is they throw in this um, tip, uh, the, the trip supplement, And then there are other um, things that they can do with that. And they kind of make up the difference. And the idea is that as they improve the tips that they get from their customers, they can lower the money from everybody else. Now, I wrote way back at a time that I thought that uh, when they introduced the tipping at delivery, that I thought that would really make Uber Eats a much better option for delivery. Well, that's never going to happen, folks, because what's going to happen is as people start tipping better, Now, with this new structure, Uber Eats can start lowering how much they're paying without having to go and change their pay model again. I think that's why they're making that change. Here are my final thoughts, I think, on the new pay model, folks. The bottom line is it's a pay reduction. Uh, Like I said, right at the beginning. Right now, it's about an overall 10% reduction. I expect it to drop to about 20 to 25% reduction after a few weeks. They're going to spin it to look like an improvement, They'll still boost some pays in some other areas to kind of mask how much of a reduction it is. But either way, just like everybody else, when they roll out a pay model, it's a reduction. But the thing is, it's designed to allow them to make further steeper, but more gradual reductions, reductions that you won't notice as they make them, but they'll do it as tipping improves. And Um, the reality is just like everybody else, all the other companies, the more their customers start tipping, the less they've got to pay themselves. And I think that's what you're going to see is you're going to see them emphasizing tips more with their customers, and you're going to see them paying less out of their pockets as those tips improve. Now, does that mean that they're less attractive as a delivery option? To me, I think they're just like everybody else. They're going to have good deliveries. They're going to have really bad deliveries. The good news is you've got information now, you know? And uh, the funny thing is, is everybody else has introduced a new pay model and it's their attempt to try and bring their costs down. And Uber is just late to the party, that's all. But it doesn't mean that you end up absolutely having to make less. Now, if your practice is to accept every delivery, yes, you're going to make less money. 
Uh, if you're selective, I think you can make more money because you have better information now to choose the good deliveries and choose the deliveries that meet your per minute price. Uh, go look up what I've written in, uh, I believe it was episode eight about our uh, uh, 40 cent rule. But you've got a lot of chances for good deliveries now. You can look for them. You have information. It just depends on how much you want to uh, fiddle with that app, especially if you're on Android, so that that information is always showing up. But in the end, it's it's like everybody else. You will have some good paying deliveries. You will have some bad paying delivery offers. And you just need to start getting a good practice at identifying which is which. And if you can do that, you're going to do better, I think, in the long run. And it can become a better option, at least in my opinion. Folks, that's going to wrap it up, I think, for me this week here. Uh, if you're on the Uber Eats uh, new model, I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts to see. And especially if you're in one of the markets that has been on this for a few weeks now, uh, let me know if you've noticed that uh, the pay has been dropping, that the trip supplements or the boosts or anything have been dropping gradually. I'm just curious to see if that's been your practice there. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on the new model. In the meantime, folks, if, uh, if this podcast, if any of the information I'm providing on the website or the podcast are helpful, uh, please spread the word if you could, please. If you can leave reviews on wherever you get your podcasts or if you can share us on social media, that helps us get found. If we can be found, that means we can help other drivers to be more profitable in operating their business. In the meantime, folks, one last thing that I ask you is always in parting. Never forget, please, to go out there, take control, and be the boss.